Dear students, welcome back. In the previous session, we have seen inguinal canal. Now, we are going to see another structure which is related to the anterior abdominal wall is the inguinal triangle. So, this inguinal triangle is also known as medial inguinal fossa and it was first described by Frank Hesselbach, a German surgeon and anatomist in 1806. So, this inguinal triangle is also called as Hesselbach's triangle. And this inguinal triangle is seen on the back of the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall. Here you can see this, this is the lower portion and the back of the anterior abdominal wall you can find this triangle called inguinal triangle so this is also called as Hasselbeck's triangle so this is the thing now now we will see the boundaries of uh, this inguinal triangle so medially so this part is the medial part medially it is related to the lower 5 centimeters of the lateral border of the rectus sheath. So, this is the rectus abdominis muscle and here you can find a covering called as rectus sheath. So, that too lower 5 centimeters of the lateral border of the rectus sheath. Sometimes we can consider it as also linea semilunaris. Okay. And then laterally, this become laterally, it, this border normally becomes superolateral. We can call it as superolateral border. So, this superolateral border is formed by the inferior epigastric artery. So, this part is formed by the inferior epigastric artery here we can find this epigastric vessels here isn't it so which is related to the inguinal canal we have seen there okay so this forms the lateral boundary coming to the inferior border or inferior boundary of this um, inguinal triangle which is related to the medial half of the inguinal ligament this is the inguinal ligament so this part actually will have this mid inguinal point so this inferior border of the hessel back triangle is related to the medial half of the inguinal ligament okay and another thing is the floor of the triangle. So, this is also having the floor. The floor of the triangle is covered by parietal peritoneum. So, that is the last layer of the anterior abdominal wall. We are coming from, um, from back side to upward. Okay. So, the floor of the triangle is covered by parietal peritoneum and then the extra peritoneal tissue and then fascia transversalis. So, these are the structures which are formed by the, uh, which are formed the floor of the triangle. Okay. Yes. Next. So, another interesting thing here is the obliterated part of the umbilical artery. So, the obliterated part of the umbilical artery. So, that means, uh, obliterated part means, so normally this umbilical artery which is present in the embryonic stage but it is not um, seen after birth. Normally, it is going to regress after birth okay and a portion of the umbilical artery obliterates to become the medial umbilical ligament it's that 
medial umbilical ligament so that is called as obliterated part of the umbilical artery so this obliterated part of the umbilical artery on both the sides and that means this is right side um, triangle and also left side triangle so which passes which passes or uh, and crosses the triangle so this obliterated part of the umbilical artery which crosses the triangle and divides this triangle into medial and lateral part medial and lateral part and this medial part is strengthened by the conjoint tendon so the conjoint tendon which is um, present on, on the back side of this triangle that is the posterior side of this triangle okay and then the lateral part is a relatively weak so this lateral part is weak the lateral part of the triangle is relatively weak and this is the area where direct hernias usually originate so this on which part of this triangle inguinal triangle causes the direct hernias means so the lateral part of the inguinal triangle causes the direct hernia not at the medial side because the medial part of the inguinal triangle is strengthened by the conjoint tendon conjoint tendon i have explained in the previous videos okay so this lateral part normally it is weak and this is the area where direct hernias usually originate okay so this hernias we are going to discuss in the applied anatomy of the anterior abdominal wall in detail okay and i want to mention uh, here one important uh, thing that is um, normally the umbilical artery which regresses after birth that a portion which obliterates to become the medial umbilical ligament this forms the medial umbilical ligament you should not confuse with the median umbilical ligament median umbilical ligament is different from medial so in this triangle we are considering the medial umbilical uh, ligament this median umbilical ligament is a different structure which represents the remnant of the embryonic uracus so we have seen that uh, uracus which is a tube like structure uh, which is connecting the umbilicus to the urinary bladder after birth okay so that is different thing okay so this is medial umbilical ligament okay and this umbilical arteries or actually the later it becomes the in, uh, internal iliac arteries okay and some of the umbilical artery which is found in pelvis which gives uh, rise to the superior vesical arteries okay so this is some of the things which are related to the umbilical artery and the inferior epigastric artery is also a branch of external iliac artery okay this is all about the inguinal triangle or hasselbacks triangle okay in the next session we are going to see the applied anatomy of the anterior abdominal wall thank you